Do you have a favorite ninja besides yourself? I'm going with Jay. I gotta go with Jay. Because you like the jokes? He's just such a dork. And I love that about him. Yeah. He's just such a goof. I remember when I saw him just rambling about trains in Crystallized, yeah. and he's listing all his favorite ones, going into all these details. I'm like, what a sweet, innocent little baby. But not gonna lie, uh, Zane is also very high up there for me too. Well, there's only a few of us, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but not gonna lie. When I say pretty high up, I mean he might be the second favorite. Or, He's number five. Of, he's, no, he's number six. Yeah, but then there's only six of us, man. He, he, he might be anywhere between five and number two. Okay, good to know, good to know. At least I'm not six. Yeah, we won't go. ask who six is. <laughs> Friends. Devin Mack, welcome to the Brent Miller Show, man. Hey, thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah, I know, it's, all, it's our pleasure, right guys? There were so many questions for you, man. I'm ready. What are your socials? You can find me on the Twitter while it still exists right. uh, as Devin O'Clock. I'm the same thing on the instant gramification. If you look up Devin Mack on YouTube, you're sure to find me. My Twitch is actually Devin and Raccoon. Ninjago is like obviously a massive show. Ooh, yeah. When you first got on Ninjago before, mm -hmm. what was your reaction? Like the first time you did it? Uh, when I played the Skull Sorcerer, yeah. I was, um, I heard a lot of really good things about Ninjago, but I didn't really know too much about it going in. Okay. So um, I started just watching some of the previous episodes saying like, oh, this is kind of awesome. I wish <laughs> I was watching this sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially because I didn't grow up having a lot of Lego. So uh, now I know what all the fuss is about. I okay. learned that very quickly. How much have you watched Ninjago? I watched all of Master of the Mountain. Yeah. And uh, I watched all of Crystallized. And I've watched all of Dragons Rising. And then I've just seen little bits of other things here and there. I got to ask about some of the things you wear, okay? Okay. You guys can't see this, but you've got... Yes. Uh, <laughs> raccoon shoes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't I know if we can lift those up I'll, at all. I'll, I'll, I don't know. Are these custom yeah, made? These are these are not custom made. They say rock uh, on, yeah. Uh, oh, they say they say rock rock on. Oh yeah. man, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Those are sweet. What's this fascination with raccoons? Uh, it's it it goes back to the ancient time of uh, 2011. Okay. When I voiced a character by the name of Raccoon in a web series called Tome, Terrain oh, of Magical okay. Expertise. Is that Chris uh, Neos? Yes, that is uh, animated and written by Chris Neos. I, I, I know Chris. I've been coffee with Chris. He invited me to play a role in this thing. And at this point, I had been more or less retired from doing online just little things like that for fun. Okay. But he really wanted me to be this one-off villain, yeah. and I was like, uh, I'll do it if you let me change the script and say whatever I want, because the lines aren't really vibing with me. And he said, okay. And uh, lo and behold, this one episode guest character ended up uh, evolving and going through his uh, an existential crisis, and then becoming a good guy by the end of it all. Okay, so that's where we get this uh, raccoon thing Yes, okay. I've worked with that character for 12 years and no signs of stopping any time. So. Okay, sweet. Now I know. So yes. What's with all this <laughs> raccoon stuff, man? <laughs> you got a raccoon necklace? Hi, okay, yes, cool. Hey, okay, and we also have, uh, uh, you guys can't see it off camera, but a Sonic backpack. Oh. So first of all, yes. congrats on Sonic, man. That's right. That's uh, a huge, thank you so much. Yeah, that's a huge one, man. Fasty McFast Fast over here. I collect the things from my characters. I work them into my fashion you know, any way that I can. That's really cool. I don't uh, do tattoos, so that's how I make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> what made you more excited, getting Aaron for Dragons Rising or Sonic? <laughs> you know what, it was, it was different levels of excitement for both. Uh, because in the sense of Sonic, there was excitement given that this is a character that I grew up watching. He's one of my heroes as a little kid. Right. Uh, but there was also the terror because I know that there is a very, very passionate fan base and everybody's got different opinions on how they think Sonic should sound and act and whatnot. Eren, I'm like, that's my guy. I'm the first person to define him. Mm -hmm. Sonic. I gotta live up to things, but fortunately the reception has been very, very warm. I've seen it. It's People been positive. Been really kind to yeah, it's me been and, positive. And I'm very grateful for that. When you auditioned for Sonic, uh -huh. did you take Jason Griffith approach, a Roger Craig mm -hmm. one, or something different? I wasn't really thinking of any one specific guy when I did my take. I just sort of 
combine them all, just my thought process of this is what Sonic sounds like to me, just elements of all of them. And um, they liked it enough to give me the role. You get a, a Sonic line from the show? You bring it, I break it, Eggman! That's the game, and I'm still the undisputed numero uno! Besides Ninjago, what projects would we both like to participate in? I'm gonna go ahead and just bring up an old school reference that many people don't remember. A show from the 1980s, before I was even born, called The Raccoons. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> okay, man. Run with us. I don't know if you know that. The, the old, the three raccoons that used to do. Uh, yeah, Bert, Bert Raccoon and Cyril Sneer. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember, I remember that. Yes. I remember there that. You yeah, go. yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. Go. I, remember that. I just have not booked a Marvel series, and I'm okay. dying to be on a Marvel show. So, for me, Marvel. I want to. Right on. Yeah. I. I and honestly, Zane is kind of like. I don't know if I could get a better character than him for mm -hmm. the longevity and how popular he is, but mm -hmm. I, I would love to voice a superhero. But it's not about me, this is about Devin Mack. Your very first audition for Ninjago, was it for King Vangelis? Pretty sure I auditioned for some characters in um, the season that was before Master of the Mountain, which his name is escaping me right now, but when they went into the video game world, that one. <laughs> Pri Prime Empire. Prime yes, Empire. yes, Prime Empire. Yes, yes. I might have auditioned for Unagami. I can't remember, but I, okay. I remember getting the auditions for that. So that was your first taste of Ninjago. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I, I could get on the show type thing. That okay, was cool. the first girl around, cool. yeah. You may not know, but he lives uh, near Toronto. So he works in the Toronto market. And probably the only voiceover guy I know that's <laughs> working in both markets and doing well. I'm a madman who's flying back and forth for a good while from Mississauga to Vancouver. Props to that. But uh, here feels more like home than Toronto. Did you say that? The people back east will shoot you for that. Uh, they already all know about <laughs> it. They, <laughs> they know. How many Ninjago sets do you own? I have the Skull Sorcerer's Dragon, uh, which I've built uh, on stream before. I also have Sora's mech from Dragon's Rising. I went on Bricklinks. I still had to get it. The only way you could get it otherwise was by buying the whole set, but I, oh. I, I, needed, I needed to have my little guy. So you can match with what you wear. Yes, so I got him and I got Sora, and he comes with a little pie. Do you ship these two? Uh, I think that they are very, very good friends. And that's how I see it. That's how you uh, they, see, they see They see each other as brother and sister as far as I'm concerned. I know that you're going to get in trouble on this, so I'm, I'm helping you out okay. by letting you know this. Seeing you do a, a promo on YouTube for your Twitch. Uh-huh. And you said, I'm building Legos. Uh-oh. With an S. Uh-oh. Has anybody got mad at you yet? <laughs> I said that one time. It's like, it's not Legos. It's Lego. It's not plural. So just so you know, Okay. In the future, All right. people are going to get mad at I you for saying Legos. I, I appreciate this coach. <laughs> That's the only life I, coaching well, I got. <laughs> I, I, I think I think people were fine with it because they accepted, like, my whole approach to that was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you and me have something in common. <laughs> Did you sing as Vangelis in the Realm of Harmony? Uh, we are the council song. Was that oh, your voice? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I did. And um, that was something I had a whole lot of fun doing. What elemental power would you, Devin, personally like to have? Ooh. Um, uh, I'm going to go with water because I am terrified of falling into it because I can't swim. But if I had that as my power, then I ain't got to worry about that no more. I can control it. So, I mean, well, okay, well, now, now I gotta ask, why did you never learn how to swim? Uh, because when I first went to a swimming class, they said, jump in, jump in. I jumped in, and then I was standing at the bottom like, <laughs> now what? Well, this was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do impressions of any of the other ninja? I've never really tried before, so I'm gonna go ahead and not embarrass myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favorite character you've ever voiced? Ooh, um... I gotta say Raccoon from Tom. That character is like my baby and I got to shape his whole story for 12 years. So that's that's my guy. This is a bit, this is way much more of a life-changing character than I would have thought. It really, to an extent you would not imagine. Uh, what's it like knowing that uh, millions of fans are hearing your voice? It is very surreal because I grew up being the shy kid in school. I was the kid who did not talk unless somebody talked to me and even then it was not a guarantee. So um, <laughs> I got very, very good over time though at practicing conversations which 
sort of naturally led me a little bit more here. But um, again, I'm just grateful that there are people who enjoy the work that I do. I get to work on a lot of cool stuff with a lot of cool people. And uh, He's right. Is there any roles in Dragons Rising that you would have wanted more than Aaron? You know what? It's complicated. It's very, very complicated because I wasn't even actually audition. I wasn't planning on auditioning for Aaron off mm. the bat. Um, I felt like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm pretty busy, got a lot of stuff doing, I had a great run with the Skull Sorcerer, so I don't think I'm gonna even read for anybody. Uh, and then I was reached out to by one of the writers, like, mm, you should read for Aaron, you should read for Aaron. I'm like, one of the writers contacted you and said, yeah. read it? Oh, you know what, let me tell you this story. Let me tell you this well, story. Well, I wanna hear it. I worked on a show in 2017, my first Vancouver show, it was called Super Dinosaur. Yeah, I'm And I had familiar. a lot of fun doing that. The head writers for that were uh, Doc Wyatt and Kevin Burke. Yep. And they are also the head writers. Our current now. writers, yeah. Uh, and they also worked on Master of the Mountain. And Super Dinosaur, really fun character, and he loved to eat pies. That was his whole thing. And what I decided to do on uh, one of the last episodes, I flew out to Vancouver to record instead of doing it in Toronto. And I said, I'm gonna bake a pie, two pies, for the cast and for the staff that's there. And uh, Doc Wyatt, who's normally in LA, had flown over to Vancouver for that session. Because he wanted to have your pie. Oh, he didn't know it was gonna <laughs> be pie. But then when he saw it, he's like, what, what, what is happening? He was taking pictures and, and everything. He was like freaking out. Uh, and let's fast forward six years later. He's like, you gotta read for Aaron. You gotta read for Aaron. I'm like, eventually I did. I got the role. I'm reading through the script and Aaron says, oh man, I can't wait to share my homemade artisanal delicious pies with everybody. No I'm like, way. You, oh, no you, way. You, you wanted this. Oh, that's <laughs> so, so cool. That's so, so um, cool. the more, and those lines weren't in the audition. So it was not until I actually started reading the script, I'm like, oh, he just wrote me. <laughs> that is so cool. Hey, hold on one second, side note. Shh. Brent, mental note, send pies to writers who can cast you in the future. <laughs>